Hi, Stitchy people. How are you today? I hope you're having a great one. Um, if you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. If you are a returning subscriber, it is good to see you again. Um, this is a little bit different. This video is not going to be quite the same as my normal floss tubes. This is sort of a special edition floss tube. Uh, it's been a while since I posted about the stuff that I've been purchasing at my haul or stash, as it were. Uh, so I wanted to do a stash flash, and I figured it would be easier just to separate it out. Um, that way, the video didn't become like an hour and a half too you know hour and a half long or two hours uh, something completely unmanageable because if you're like me you have a lot of stuff going on and it's hard to keep up with the floss tube anyway so try to keep it in more bite-sized bits so that you can consume it at your leisure so this one is just going to be about stitchy stuff that I have purchased over the last couple of months and I will I will put that disclaimer there this has been over the last couple of months so this is not just like the last two weeks or something like that because <laughs> the last video I posted uh, or the the floss tube, the first floss tube I didn't put my haul in was like May 19th or something like that so this is all the stuff I had accumulated up to May 19th and then all the stuff that I've accumulated from May 19th to today and as of filming it's June 10th um, so yeah so that's all, at least two months worth of stuff so just I'm a little crazy, I'm a little bit of a hoarder, but it's not as bad as it might seem. <laughs> so with that, let's just get right into it. So um, the first thing I want to show you is actually sitting over here, I'm going to talk about it. You can't see it, don't see uh, <laughs> so this is something I'm super excited about. Uh, if you follow Rachel Raycraft, you may have already seen her discuss it. She actually did an unboxing of one of these on her channel. I'll try to remember to link that below in case you want additional information about this particular stand. Uh, it is uh, it is called an Elan lap, lap stand. Lap stand? an Elan lap stand. So it is made of solid oak, I believe. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of stitching furniture, um, handmade in the States, in Oregon, I believe. And, um, and yeah, so I first saw it, a friend of mine had purchased one and then Rachel purchased one. Um, and the reviews that I got from both of them were fantastic. So I had to get one too. And I ordered this back in early, or late April, I think, like April 22nd or something like that. And I knew it was going to take a little while. Handmade items take a while. And with the mail being what it is, um, I didn't, I didn't know how long it was going to take. And, um, I know I mentioned it to some of my friends on a Zoom chat. I can't remember if I mentioned it here, but I just wasn't sure how long it was going to take. And then lo and behold, the week of my birthday, no less, it appeared in the mail and it is fantastic and I love it. And let me show you. So I have a whole bunch of other stuff sitting here too. I'm trying to try not to show you that. So this is my Elan lap stand. So let me turn it around. Um, <clears throat> don't mind this. It has a, it's just a little bit of a shim. Um, but yeah, so this is what the lap stand looks like. Um, this bit uh, is actually the vice grip that holds your scroll or your um, your cross stitching frame, whatever you use. If you stitch in hand, this is not going to help you a whole lot. Um, but if you use hoops, if you use cue snaps, if you use the um, the proprietary scroll lock frames that um, the Elon, uh, it's Artisan Designs is the company that makes these, uh, and they make their their um, proprietary uh, lock scroll frames as well. All of those will fit into here. Um, as you can see, it's got these elastic bands <clears throat> that are holding on these little, um, these little wooden blocks here. So having these adapters in here allows me to use um, this vice grip on um, projects that are in hoops. So it creates this sort of, um, <clears throat> it creates this sort of hole uh, level what am I trying to say here? It creates this flat surface for a hoop to sit into and it holds it very, very securely. Now, if you want to use um, a Q-snap instead, if you're a Q-snap person, you just take out, um, I believe you take out the top, um, the top one here. So you just remove that, comes off very easily. This is just a needle miter. So it comes off very easily. You just take that out. Um, the instructions tell you which side you should take out. I can't remember. It might actually be the bottom one you're supposed to take out. Regardless, for a Q-snap, you only need one of these. 
and then it will hold your Q snap just fine. If you're using the uh, Artisan Design lock scroll frames, you don't need either of those. This is this um, grip is designed to hold those specifically. So these are the adapter pieces that let it hold other things. So the lovely thing about this, I actually use mine on a table, so you don't have to use it um, as a lap frame. Let me just get this guy back in here. There's so many lovely things about this. But first and foremost, it's got three different heights. Um, so this piece, where your, uh, your actual cross stitch piece is held, where your frame is held, it actually will sit on any of these three levels. So you can have it high, low, whatever works for you. So if I were actually, oops, if I were using this on my lap uh, on the couch or something, I would probably want it up fairly high so it'd be closer to my face. Since I use it mostly on a table, uh, this lowest setting is actually a, the perfect height. Um, so you set that up to however you want your work. Um, you clip it into this vice grip and it actually has um, this function here where it's specifically designed so that you can flip the work over and then flip it back and flip the work over and flip it back without having to tighten this all the time. Um, and this arm is adjustable so you can bring the work closer to you, you can push it farther away. You just want to try to keep this piece center, not centered, but not too far off of the, the base of the frame just so your work doesn't flip over. And it's also designed so that you can actually put a pretty long piece on here. So this stretches out so that you can center your work. You can't see that in the camera. Um, but it stretches out so that you can center your work so it's got a nice base um, to sit on and it won't tip over. So it's really really super awesome. Um, that's just a super quick review from uh, the month or so that I've been using it. I love it. I am so in love with it um, and it's fantastic. It smells really good because it's oiled and um, really well designed and it also has these nice little grippy feet on it um, so that you can use it on like a table and it's not going to scratch it up and all that sort of stuff. So I've been very, very, very happy with this. Um, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, I'll try to remember to put the uh, Artisan Designs link down uh, in, the, in the comments, not comments, in the description. Um, if you're interested in finding out more uh, or seeing at least an unboxing of this, what comes in the box and all that sort of stuff, um, I'll link you to Rachel's um, unboxing. Um, but yeah, I can't say enough about this. Um, it's relatively inexpensive for the, the piece of equipment that it is because this is solid wood. It's handmade. It's beautiful. Um, it smells really good. <laughs> Assuming you like wood oil. If you don't like wood oil, that could be a thing. So just FYI. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's so well made. It's so beautiful. I'm very, very happy to have it. Um, it's possibly my favorite thing that I have purchased for cross stitching in my life. So <laughs> there is that. Um, let's see. Let's do, let's talk about some other, not specifically, like some other accessories that I've purchased. So this is, I'm going to try to hide this from you. Um, so some of the other things that I have purchased, you can't see. You can see, but I'm trying not to let you see. Um, <laughs> So I also decided, um, I've been on this kick to get project bags and things like that, and your standard cross stitch uh, project bags can be kind of expensive, um, but I have used other things for, I mean, pretty much any bag with a zipper can be a project bag. Um, so, uh, and I was so in love with the last unicorn zipper bag. Um, I got the, the zipper bag that I got for Secret Santa. Um, that has artwork from Medusa Dollmaker of The Last Unicorn. I've been so in love with that. I decided to go to uh, Redbubble and purchase a couple more bags with artwork from the same artist. So um, <clears throat> I got, this is, a, as you might recognize, this is um, Gamer Nouveau, which is still one of my all-time favorite art pieces. Love it. So I got that. Um, and I can't remember, I can't remember what the title of this piece is. And I'm not sure why I love it. It's just, I don't know. There's something about it. It's, it's definitely a steampunk kind of situation. Uh, she's got the goggles here. Um, still the Art Nouveau style, which I'm totally in love with. There's just something very, I don't know, very appealing about that. So I got that. 
And then last but not least, I got this. And this is Bohemia. This is a gorgeous piece of artwork. I might actually eventually get this um, This as a cross stitch from Gecko Rouge. Um, but that will depend entirely on me actually working on and or completing Gamer Nouveau first. <laughs> I'm not gonna buy another kit until I have at least started Gamer Nouveau. So um, I got those. Again, that artist is Medusa Dollmaker. And uh, I purchased these off of Redbubble, uh, which is a site that sort of it's like a marketplace where I think different um, makers can contract with artists to make licensed items off of the artist's work. Um, so hopefully that makes sense to you. It's all on the up and up. Um, so Medusa Dollmaker has given her permission for Redbubble to have these printed, but I think it works kind of like if you've ever used Zazzle. So when you purchase something off of Zazzle, you're purchasing an item with artwork on it, but you don't necessarily know who is producing that item. You just know that they have asserted that they have licensing. Um, <clears throat> now I do know that the folks on Redbubble have licensing for this for this artwork because I got um, that website, the Redbubble link directly from Medusa the doll dollmaker herself. So um, I think from her website. So I know that Redbubble is authorized to print these things, but I don't know who the producer is. And the only reason I say this is because I don't know if you noticed, I ordered the same size bag. So all three of these should be the same. And it's harder to tell. These two actually are almost the same, but they're slightly off. So the, they're not quite the exact same dimensions. There's a little bit of a, um, a funkiness happening, like it's not a straight edge at the top. So those are slightly different. These are about the same size, but you can see that this Bohemia bag uh, is much larger by about an inch. So um, I'm not sure, and I'm just noticing that there's like a loose stitch on here. So anyway, <laughs> as much as I love the artwork and the artist, um, I'm not, these are not quite as good a quality as the other, the other bag that I've received. Um, and I'm, I mean, the, the difference in size is very strange to me. Um, it seems to me if I purchase a certain size bag, then all the bags should be the same size. So, um, to be completely honest, I have not contacted Redbubble to try to do anything about it. Um, it took long enough for them to arrive that I was just happy to have them. And, um, you know, it probably would affect future purchases, but I'm not sure um, that it was worth my time to try to get it fixed. Because I have a feeling um, that they'd probably just send me the same things again. So, but I do mention that in case you decide to go to Redbubble to have something printed from your favorite artist, um, because this is something you should you should consider. You may or may not get the exact dimensions that, that you were expecting. So, love the bags, at least the artwork on the bags. I mean, they're still super useful. Um, they were relatively, they weren't too expensive, um, but buyer beware. <laughs> So um, do love that artwork. Um, I would consider trying to find a different source for some of Medusa Dollmaker stuff. Um, she is based in Spain. So getting items directly from her is difficult for me um, because I live in the US. But, um, but yeah, so uh, purchasing directly, she does have an Etsy shop, um, but purchasing directly from her is problematic for me. Um, probably best to go through Gecko Rouge to get some of her stuff. Um, she's also licensed through Die Moon Shop if you're a diamond painter, um, and that's D-I-Y-M-O-O-N shop, Die Moon Shop. Um, they do have several of her pieces as diamond paintings if that's something you're interested in. Uh, but there are several different places that you can get Medusa Dollmaker's artwork. Um, just beware if you're going to get stuff off of Redbubble. I'm not exactly sure who does that production. She does not do it herself. Um, it's done through a third party. So that is that. The other super exciting thing I've gotten, um, and I'm still waiting on some of these. So Bags Plus. Are you familiar with Bags Plus? If you're not, 
you should get familiar with Bags Plus. So, um, and that's B-A-G-Z-P-L-U-S. Um, she makes fantastic devices for storing your bobbinated floss. Um, if you're not a floss bobbinator, then this is probably not of interest to you. Uh, you can skip ahead uh, unless you have little bits that you like to store. Um, if you are a bobbinator like me, these are fantastic. I love them. I have been wanting more for ages. Um, Karina at Bags Plus did a sale in April, um, or starting in April. I think it was all throughout May um, for her anniversary, for her shop's two-year anniversary. So I wanted to support her. I ordered several. Um, I'm still waiting, and that's not her fault. Let me just put that out there. It is not at all her fault. Karina's fantastic. She's super communicative. Um, when it seemed like they were taking a while to get here, I emailed her. Um, unfortunately, she had sent it regular first class mail, so there was no tracking for her to, to give to me. Totally understandable. I didn't pay for upgraded shipping or anything like that. Um, so she very graciously offered to resend them if I didn't receive them. Um, I did wait quite a while um, before I finally had to agree that they probably were lost. Um, so I just let her know within this week that um, that it looks like they are lost. She is incredibly graciously remaking them and resending them. So um, hopefully those will be here. Um, I think she was going to send them this week, so hopefully by um, a couple floss tubes from now I will have them. Um, again, that is not at all her fault. International mail is crazy right now, and uh, sending any kind of mail without tracking is probably, um, it's probably going to get lost. That's just with all the craziness in the world, um, mail is having a hard time. Uh, I've had a couple of customers who've, whose packages have disappeared until I put in an inquiry and then suddenly when I inquire about it, they reappear. So um, unfortunately, this was a situation where we couldn't inquire because there was no tracking. So, um, but as I said, she's been incredibly gracious. I'm super, super, super thankful. Um, if you're somebody living in the United States who wants to purchase from Karina, she is in the UK. So keep that in mind when you're purchasing. Um, or if you want to purchase Bags Plus and you're patient, you can wait until Michelle G at Mindy Stitchy does a live sale like she did towards the end of May. So I don't have the original Floss Buddies that I purchased from Karina directly, but I did get in on this live sale that Michelle G did. So I have Floss Buddies. I have Floss Buddies. I have so many Floss Buddies. Okay. so. Word of caution, if you get in on a live sale on YouTube or any other means that people do a live sale, um, keep track of what you're buying and how much you're spending because uh, it's really easy to get excited and start doing me pleases on like everything. <laughs> so I have quite a few to show you. So um, let me just, I have, I have some silks um, in one of these because I'm going to be using that for a project. So let me just take that out. That's for a super secret project, so I can't show you the silks. Um, okay, so let's start the bendy flip parade. I bought so many bendy flips. Ah, look, it's cats. I love cats. Okay, I have four cats, so I have to love cats. But look how cute they are. Some of the, this little guy, this guy up here has, like, he's a bandit. <laughs> he's wearing a little shirt and I love this calico they're so cute okay so this is a this is officially called a bendy flip um, and I think because Michelle Bendy Stitchy instigated the design so um, as you can see it's relatively small on the front here we have the super cute fabric design and there is a pocket where you can put stuff I'm gonna start putting um, the little um, I'm gonna cut out the little um, project tags from my 24 hours of cross stitch planner um, files. I'm going to print those and cut those out and start putting in, uh, putting those in the fronts here so I can tell what threads these belong to. So those tags say what the project is, the fabric and all that sort of stuff when you started it. Um, so that'll be super great to put down here so I can tell what these belong to because as I'm getting more of these, I'm realizing I don't remember what projects they belong to. <laughs> so anyway, but you can put all kinds of odds and ends in here. Sometimes if I don't have enough space for all the bobbins, I'll put the extra ones here. If I'm traveling, I'll put my, my little scissors in here. I don't have my scissors 
handy to show you but uh, you can also put you can put a pin in here you know you can whatever little odds and ends so on that side and then on this side this is where you put all your bobbins so this uh, the bendy flip has space for 12 bobbins um, and you just slide the bobbins right in if I can if I have one handy that actually has stuff in it I'll show it to you in a minute but yeah so this is a, a 12 space floss buddy um, lovingly known as a bendy flip so this is bendy flip number one cats this one I was super excited about so this happened almost at the end of the live sale and it's <gasps> Christmas llamas how cute super super cute Christmas llamas and then it's got blue fabric on the back which is great and it's nice and um, she puts felt in here so it's nice and soft it won't snag on your on your threads and stuff super nice this is one for my Harry Potter fans this one is called Patronus and it's kind of difficult to see but it's got um, there's some stag heads and um, some reference some other references to Harry Potter like spell work looking stuff uh, but primarily it's got these sort of ethereal looking stag heads and then the floss on the back this one is super cute and it's funny because I had I had purchased a bird one from Karina directly and um, I think she was out of the fabric when I finally admitted that they had gotten lost in the mail or finally relegated myself to that and so um, she said she didn't have that but I think this might be <laughs> this might be the fabric that I couldn't get so how lucky is that this is super cute so this is it's little birds but they have needles and thread and a bobbin how cute that's so cute and there's thimbles yeah, it's just, it's a little sewing birds. Super cute. And I can't remember the the artist or the designer for this fabric, but there's these like cute little mouthless and noseless girls. <laughs> it sounds really weird. They're sort of goth, um, but not too goth and just really cute. So this might, I might have to use this for, um, for the key uh, goose in a dress cell um, or gander in a dress cell um, because I don't know the colors kind of speak to that project I think especially the little girls in the dresses and stuff so that might that might go towards um, keeping my my goose in a dress the key uh, this is by the same I think this is by the same designer I forgot that um Michelle put a little handwritten note. She's so sweet. Um, but yeah, this is like little goth cameos. I'm already using one of these for my witchy stitchy pattern, uh, witchy stitcher pattern, my Baba Yaga, but maybe this would be more fitting for the mood of that. Maybe I'll have to see which one I'm using for that. Um, and this one is super cute and I actually have, um, I'll show you this I'll show you this separate because that's actually something else that I received um, so this is cupcakes like rainbow cupcakes who doesn't love rainbow cupcakes love 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 also it's blue it's blue so yeah fantastic and then uh, because I have a couple of projects that need more than 12 um, I finally got myself a bigger floss buddy um, so I don't know if this has a clever name like bendy stitchy or bendy flip or what uh, but this is a one two three four five yeah so this is a 25 pocket floss buddy 25 pockets for a nice big project and this is sweet unicorns so pretty um, I can't I don't think I don't think yoga corns has quite this many um, colors to it but I mean that would be appropriate wouldn't it to use for yoga corns um, this also because it's larger it has a nice little velcro closure to keep all your little bits in place um, but that's almost big enough to actually put a paper pattern in depending on the size of your pattern um, and I will say Karina makes these uh, she, I think she makes starting at 16 um, 
uh, at the size that holds 16 bobbins, she actually has started making some folding ones. This is not one of them. This is a, this is a standard flip. Um, but she has started making ones like these that actually fold over and tie. So if you like the idea of this, but not the, um, you know, how big it is and how flat it is, uh, she is starting to make a bunch of folding ones. Um, and she makes them in all sizes. So this is, this is the largest one that I own. Um, I did order a 16 bobbin one, um, in my order directly from Corrine, so that's coming at some point. Um, and I think I did order that one specifically for yoga corns because that is like a galaxy unicorn pattern on it. Um, <clears throat> uh, but yeah, so she makes them in um, itty bitty ones that only hold six bobbins for itty bitty projects and 12s and 16s, 25, 32 to 36 and 45 and sometimes even bigger ones. I think she has actually made one that holds all the DMC colors as well. Um, that might be a special order, but she makes them in all sizes. Uh, she makes them in several different styles, uh, including these flips, but also project bags and also folding floss buddies. So that is bags plus. Um, and as I said, I got these from Michelle G. She is a, an authorized U.S. reseller, maybe not reseller, um, distributor. Um, she works directly with Karina and she gets large shipments from Karina that she sells um, via YouTube. Um, or at least that's how I got these was through a YouTube live sale. So as far as I know, that's her normal process for that. So look to uh, look to Karina directly if you want to purchase from the UK. Um, follow Michelle G. Bendy Stitchy if you want to find out when she might do another one of these sales. So let's see something else special that I got uh, and it's so funny because my package from Karina didn't arrive but my package from peppermint purple did <laughs> peppermint purple is also in the UK you may recall uh, the name from the peppermint purple black or year long year of black work SAL that I'm working on um, that I'm woefully behind on um, peppermint purple decided or actually she didn't decide she was sort of um, bullied into, <laughs> bullied is the wrong word, she was convinced to make um, some logo designed items. Uh, she had posted, I think, a mouse pad and a needle minder um, or a mug or something that she had made, had made with her logo for herself. And she had so many fans say, where can I buy that? Um, that she started, uh, she had a bunch of them produced so that she could sell them. So um, when she made the needle minders live. Let me see if I can, err. okay. I gotta do the, gotta do the camera thing. Someday I'll have enough money to get a new camera, y'all. So this is Peppermint Purple's signature needle minder. You can see it's got her little needle with the heart logo. It's purple. It's perfect. It's gorgeous. So yeah, I definitely got in on that. She had a limited number and I got in on that, and that arrived uh, a week ago, recently. Um, and it's so funny because I keep forgetting what I've ordered and then stuff shows up and it's like a new surprise. <laughs> so yeah, that was fun. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I'm gonna try to do this oldest to newest with the, when I get to the fabric, there's there's no telling. Um, I can kind of pick out which pieces are fabric of the month, but other than that, I don't remember when I bought it. I just know that I bought it in the last three months or so. Um, so first and foremost, um, the oldest thing I think I have here, this is, um, so I'm part of Coloring Cotton's Floss of the Month Club. Um, I get five of their bright slash variegated colors and I get three of their primitive neutrals. Um, I was going to switch it up. I think I mentioned the last time I talked about coloring cotton that I was going to try to get more brights and no neutrals. Um, but it turns out that the largest pack of neutrals they have, or largest pack of either that they have is five colors at a time. So that's as many as you can get um, at one time. You can order multiple packs, but you still only get five colors per pack. They don't do an eight or a 10. I thought, I, I thought they did, but I was mistaken. So um, rather than, um, switching anything up. I've just left it with the brights and the neutrals. Um, so again, the five brights and the three neutrals. 
I haven't received May's pack yet, um, but they have been in communication. They're running behind um, as expected. Um, with all of the, the working restrictions in place, um, in addition to the, the challenges that the male is facing, um, everybody's running behind and it's totally fine. Um, I'm, not, I'm not mad at anybody especially when folks communicate with me. So they've already said, you know, they, they already hand dye everything for their floss of the month. Um, and then when you consider that they have a significantly reduced crew because of work restrictions, and then the mail is taking longer, it's all good. So um, the colors I have here are April's colors. And then hopefully next time I do a haul video or include haul in my video, um, I will have May's. So fingers crossed. Um, so let's go with the neutrals first. So this is, I should probably do the white paper thing, but I don't want to. So this is Sandcastle. And I probably should, I shouldn't have straightened out the camera yet. Let me hold this up here. You can actually see Sandcastle. Okay. So that's Sandcastle. And brown sugar. It's really nice. And Chimney Sweep is the last one. Pretty, pretty. That's a nice charcoal-y kind of color, chalkboard black kind of color. Very nice. Ugh, I apologize for my itchy nose. Ugh, let me take a sip of water. Ugh, so much talking today. Ugh, okay. And now for the brights. The brights are really, really nice. So even though this is April's pack, um, these are really kind of very summery colors to me. Uh, this first one is Pink Lemonade. It matches my shirt. <laughs> How gorgeous is that? So pretty. Um, I can't wait to do some summer stitches with these colors. This is Primrose. It's kind of a dusty, dusty pink kind of color. And this one this was pink lemonade again, but it's got, it's coming off a little peachy, but it's actually got some bright yellow in there. Uh, this one is lime sorbet, which again reminds me of summer. Bright colors. It's sort of a yellow green into a, a more muted green. Oh, my nose is super itchy. Oh, pardon me. Uh, this is Poppy, and this is, ooh, that's getting kind of blown out. Um, this is a really gorgeous color. I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of. It's like a, it's a really bright red pink. Um, and I don't know, like strawberry sorbet or something. Um, and this one is called Apricot, which is a little bit like dreamsicle to me really nice gorgeous colors so these read very summery to me like i'm thinking summer drinks um sorbets and sherbets and um ices and things like that like these are the colors except for this one this one's a little dusky but all these i mean these are like limeade lemonade like all that all that stuff it's fantastic love it love it love it so those are really great so those are the coloring cottons that I have um, for right now. Hopefully May will be coming soon. Um, they don't charge until the end of the month, like the 23rd or something like that. So May is the only one I'm waiting on currently. Um, hopefully that will come before um, they start charging for June. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I have a bunch more floss to show you. Um, these are all from Kathy Davidson at Dying for Cross Stitch. Um, now, and I'm gonna I know I'm just going to do this again in a second, but I don't like looking at myself and seeing that I'm fuzzy. And you probably don't like looking at me and seeing I'm fuzzy either, seeing that I'm fuzzy either. So, um, so Kathy has started offering re-dyes of her, of her, of her, of her cotton hand-dyed floss. Um, I may have mentioned this before. So usually on Sunday, she will post, um, um, a couple of different colorways of hand dyed cotton floss. She also offers silk flosses um, on Sundays and they've been so hard to get. They're so difficult. There's so many people trying to get them because they're so gorgeous um, that trying to get them is this thing where if you're not, if you're not able to say me please in the first two seconds, you're not getting it. So um, 
a number of us had wondered if she might be willing to do a floss of the month club um, and rather than doing that what she has decided to do is offer a floss re-dye once a month so any colors that have sold out which is all of them um, any cotton um, flosses that have sold out over the course of the month she'll re-offer at the end of the month beginning of the next month um, as re-dyes and you can purchase um, I think the minimum is 10 yards um, or as much as you want and um, or request as much as you want and she will re-dye those colors for you and send them to you so if you if you're like me and you're not a huge fan of the fighting and the me pleasing um, or if you just miss out um, because you're not fast enough, which is a thing, um, you can purchase those at the end of the month, which is fantastic. So this is what I, that is what I did uh, for, this, these are from May. Um, and I also got her fabric of the month. So she does her fabric of the month a little bit differently than some of the other dyers. Rather than signing up as a subscription and you get charged every month and she sends it out automatically every month, she tells you what color she's gonna do and then you decide if you want it and you purchase it. Um, so the same time she does floss re -dyes, she offers her fabric of the month. She's doing all of that through a website now versus her Facebook page. Um, I'll try to put all of the links in the description. Um, but yeah, so I think the I think the website goes live next week, um, and the floss re -dyes and the fabric of the month are only available for one week each month. Um, she has a calendar on her Facebook page. So that is, that is your source for that information um, because this may be out of date by the time you see it. So go to her Facebook page, um, her Facebook group, and find that calendar file. That will tell you when you need to go to her website to get Fabric of the Month and Floss Free Dyes. So without further ado, let me show you what I got from May. She had some gorgeous, 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 gorgeous colors. And I'm so, so excited that she started doing re -dyes. Um This color is called Peacock Party. How gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, let me redo this. You know I love it because it's purple. Um, but it's got this nice navy blue. So it kind of goes into a deep lavender. And you can see she started naming them their Peacock Party. Gorgeous. And these are phoenix rising this is one of my favorite colors that i've seen her do so we've got these like um, mahogany and rust kind of colors at the bottom fading into this really dark rich teal um, which i think is just gorgeous it's fantastic and with those i managed to get uh, these are solids that coordinate so um, it's kind of a secret how I got that done, but look how fantastic that is. So these are actually 50 yard hanks. You can purchase uh, 50 yard hanks. You can purchase 10 yard hanks um, when she does re -dyes. but these are fantastic. Love, 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 love those colors. I'm not sure what I'm going to use. Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to use any of this for, but, <laughs> but I love having so many colors to choose from. This one is a fun one and I'm really, really not sure what I'm going to use this for. Um, this is called Hoppy Belated Easter. It's going to get blown out because of the light. Um, but it's a really pale, I mean, these are kind of like baby pastels. So it's a really pale yellow into a pale green and pale blue so it's really hard to tell how that looks because the light is just blowing it right out but very pretty very springy this would probably be good for uh, like a long dog sampler um, or a quaker style pattern that's all one color um, to stitch this really light variegated floss on a dark fabric i think that would be really pretty this one is really nice, and I can't wait to find a project for this either. This is called Cafe Ole. So, gorgeous. Look at all the beautiful browns, almost black at the bottom, and some kind of brown gray. These are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I think if I choose to do, if I end up doing a Black Lives Matter pattern, um, I will probably actually use this in it because I think that's that's the color of diversity I think um, it's got all the all the gorgeous colors gorgeous 
Um, and then this last but not least, I love the name of this one. This one's Unicorn. And this one really does go with my shirt. <laughs> so we've got that light kind of blue, teal kind of color, pink and dark purples. Really beautiful. Um, I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't actually been paying attention on a weekly basis to what Kathy's been dyeing um, because I know that I can buy them at redyes um, at the end of the month. So uh, hopefully next week, that's when her redyes will go live and I will see what's available then. Uh, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to be conservative in my purchasing. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Um, cause I've, uh, I've already purchased a bunch of new silks from Brandy at Be Stitch Me. They're very exciting. She's just started dyeing silks and she's doing a fantastic job and I can't wait to receive those. So, um, yeah, so that's going to be, that's going to be for next time. I haven't gotten those yet. Um, okay. So that's floss. Um, that's a lot of floss. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I need to start figuring out how to convert some some more projects into these colors from DMC because <laughs> I have a lot of stuff. So um, let's see. Since I was just talking about Kathy, let's go into Kathy's fabric first. So um, yeah, so fabric is pretty much yeah. I think once I get through fabric, that'll be all of the haul. But let me tell you, we're already forty minutes in. Can you believe it? <laughs> I can't even believe it. Um, I knew I needed to separate this out, but I didn't realize it was going to be quite that necessary. So, um, so yeah, once we get done with fabric, we will be done for the day. I think you'll be ready to go. <laughs> it's going to, it's going to take a minute. So, but anyway, since I was just doing Kathy's floss, let me do Kathy's fabric next. Um, and I'm going to try to tell you which fabric... Um, it's going to be interesting because you're going to see that there's kind of a theme here and I'm not sure how I manage that. So, um, let's see. This first piece, I think these are all linens. Um, and this first piece is a 32 count linen fat quarter. And this is her May fabric of the month. Um, and it's really, really pretty. It's way better in person than it was in her picture. Look how... Look how nice. It's a nice springy, like pinky purple lavender color. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I kind of wish I had gotten, I think the reason I didn't get an even weave was because probably I looked at the pictures and decided that the, the linen was prettier. Um, that's happening a lot, but really when I, I like the colors better on linen, but I like to stitch more on even weave. So... <laughs> So it's hard for me when the two are pitted against each other because the linen, um, the linen is almost always going to be much more vibrant. Um, and part of that is because, um, to go into a little bit of a digression, part of that is because linen and cotton are um, obviously plant fibers. They're natural plant fibers. Most dyers who dye um, fabric for cross stitching will use fiber reactive dyes. Uh, fiber reactive dyes are specifically designed to bond with natural plant fibers. Um, and so when you have a fabric that is all natural plant fiber, it, um, it bonds better with all of the fibers. You get a more vibrant color, you get more thorough color. Um, when you dye something like Lugana, or Jobelin. Um, these are blended fabrics. They're not completely linen. They're not completely um, cotton. They're usually a blend of cotton and rayon um, or some other man-made fabric. So because they only have a partial, um, they're only partially cotton or partially linen, they don't take as much as the dye. Or they don't take as much of the dye. It would help if I could talk. I haven't had lunch yet, so my brain's like, wee. Um, yeah, so they don't they don't take in as much of the dye. They don't hold it in as well. Um, the the other types of fiber or the blend um, just doesn't hold the dye as well. So when you dye a linen and you hold it next to um, a piece of whatever even weave, whether it's Lugana, Jobelin, um, or any of the others, when you hold them, when you dye them with the same process and then you hold them together, your even weave is almost always going to be lighter and less vibrant. Um, and that's just because it's maybe 50% cotton. Um, so it's only, it's only really soaking up really intensely 50% of that dye. 
that's just the way it works. Um, but I love, 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 love the feel of even weave so much more than the feel of linen when I'm stitching. So anyway, <laughs> all that to say, that's why I bought the linen. Um, but yeah, this is her, this is her May fabric of the month. This is Kathy Davidson at Dying for Cross Stitch Again. Very gorgeous, um, nice light piece of, um, of purple. These other two, or these next two, um, these are both linens as well. These are ice dyed. Um, ice dyeing is a process I've talked about before. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you might want to check out, I think it's floss tube number one, my very first one, where I talk about some of my own ice dyeing. It's a really fun process, um, easy to try if you're just wanting to play around with something. Kathy does some fantastic things with ice dyeing. So this is, I think, 32 count. And she gets these great effects, these marbling effects. Um, this is really, really nice. Gorgeous spring, summer colors. This would be great with some kind of floral design, I think. Um, really, really pretty. And Kathy has gotten some fantastic results on Lugana um, with her ice dyeing. Unfortunately, I was not fast enough with my fingers for the Lugana for this particular week because I got two pieces, two pieces of linen, but I wasn't fast enough to get the Lugana because I would have gotten the Lugana this time. Um, so that was 32 count linen. This is a 28 count. Sorry, I'm just watching the mail person go by a second time without stopping at my mailbox. <laughs> we didn't get any mail yesterday, and we should have. Um, and it doesn't look like we're getting mail today either. So, um, so this is 28 count linen. And this is also, it's, it's interesting because I'm sure she used the same colors you can see, um, but the effects are so totally different in this piece. And the colorway is very different in this piece. So even though it's the same kind of fabric, it's the same colors of dye, you get such a different effect. It's really, really nice. At some point, I'm gonna go back and watch this video and go, hmm, what can I use that fabric for? Um, it's actually a really great thing that I do with these videos is I go, huh, I don't, I forgot about that piece of fabric. That would be perfect for X thing that has come up in the last six weeks since I, I filmed that, so. <laughs> Um, let's see. And then this, I think I got this a long time ago, honestly. This is a piece of 36 count linen. Now for a while I was buying tons of 36 count. Um, and it's not that I don't like 36 count, I still haven't stitched on it yet. I haven't used any of my 36 count linen. So because I haven't stitched on it yet and I'm not sure if I will like it, I decided it would probably be best to stop buying it all the time. Um, I have plenty of pieces to play with for when I'm ready. But look. So this is 36 count linen. It's a nice big piece. Look at that. Look, oh, so gorgeous. And this is just a little, look, it looks like hydrangeas. Oh, so pretty. Oh my gosh. I need to, I need to stitch something huge on this piece because I need to be able to see all of that. Oh, so pretty. I might have to find a long dog for that. I don't know what color I would stitch on it, but it'd be gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. So that is all of the fabrics that I have purchased lately from Kathy of Dying for Cross Stitch. Um, there are not a ton. I have been, it doesn't look like it, but I've actually been trying to cut back on my fabric purchases because I have a whole lot of fabric and not nearly enough projects. Um, to dedicate them to quite yet. So, um, so yeah, I've been trying to back off. Um, but when I show you the Misty stuff, it's not gonna look like I backed off. <laughs> but yeah, so that's all my Kathy fabric. Let me show you the Mystic stuff next, uh, since I just mentioned it. So I have two months worth of Misty's uh, fabric of the month. Um, I have actually decided to stop getting Misty's fabric of the month. Um, part of that is because I found that her weekly dyes or semi-weekly dyes, um, stuff that she posts to the group for sale, um, are actually far more exciting and interesting than her fabric of the month has been for the last several months. Um, I was waiting until she finished the four color um, set 
basically, uh, which was, I didn't realize until much later, but uh, she did four colors that are meant to go with the Ink Circles Elemental Dragon patterns. Now, I'm not going to stitch those patterns, um, which is neither here nor there. It's just not my bag. Um, so, but I wanted to get all four colors because it was a thing. Um, so this is the last of those four. And then I thought June's fabric of the month was actually going to be Pride. Um, because I know she dyes pride fabric for June, but it turns out that she she's saving the pride fabrics for posting in the group. So um, the fabric of the month for June was a neutral. So anyway, I have just decided that rather than getting random neutrals uh, when I would prefer exciting colors, I'll just buy stuff that I want when she posts it versus um, you know, getting random neutrals in the mail once a month. So I have ended my, uh, my fabric of the month with Misty. Uh, but this was, so this was May's. This is called Spring Breeze. I think this is May's. Oh, maybe it's not May. Did I already show you May? I might have showed you May. Anyway, maybe this is May. I'm not sure anymore. I have several pieces of this now, so I'm really not sure. Um, so yeah. <laughs> this was a fabric of the month color. I don't remember which month. Um, this is Lugana. And it's actually got, it's got a little bit more modeling than a lot of the pieces that I've gotten recently. But it's still relatively uniform. Um, it is a nice, it's a nice sort of neutral, cool, cool neutral color. Maybe a lot of people wouldn't describe this as neutral. To me, this will go with so many things. I kind of feel like it's a neutral. So, um, but it's nice. It's nice. It's a pale, pale blue color. Not bad at all. Um, this is June's fabric of the month. And I know for certain that this is June's fabric of the month. It even says June fabric of the month. Um, so this color is called Diversity. I'm going to hold it up and then I'll talk about it. Which sounds really ominous. I don't mean it that way. So this is Diversity. Which is, you know, it's a nice neutral. Um, I will say this about it. Um, I don't see a lot of diversity. Um, I mean, it's kind of beige. There's a little bit of modeling, some lighter, somewhat lighter tones. Um, and it's, I mean, I would love to say that it's just the light, but it actually, it actually looks more modeled on camera than it does in person. Um, so what you're seeing is actually better than true life um as far as you know color differentiation and stuff um so i mean i will absolutely use this uh, this is a lugana as well um it's not at all that i won't use it um i don't feel that the name is terribly appropriate um because this piece is is sandpaper colored um and it's fairly uniform um, it's also relatively similar to Snert, which is a color she has on her website all the time. So, um, that's all I'll say about that. This is a color that Misty put together, um, specifically for the Unicorn Tapestry, um, pattern. And, um, it is, it's a color that I really, really like. Um, I got this in... Oh, I got 36 count. Why did I get 36 count? Oh my God. Ugh, what did I do to myself? Okay. So that was apparently before I decided to stop buying 36 count. Sweet. Okay. Anyway, so this is a 36 count opal linen. Though it's a, it's a thicker linen. When you get opal linen, it actually is, um, it's a much thicker fabric than your standard linens. So this actually probably won't be so bad to work on. Um, compare if I if I'd gotten a non opal linen I probably would have hated it um, but this is a new color that she she uh, developed specifically for the unicorn tapestry pattern from tiny modernist um, it's a gorgeous gorgeous color it's called dreamy 
Now let me show you this. It's very nice. It's not quite as teal as I had wanted, and it's coming off sort of denim colored in the camera. Um, in real life, it's it's got a little bit more teal to it, but I would have liked even more teal. Um, I'm considering potentially purchasing a piece of the called for fabric just to compare them and see which one I really would want to stitch that on. Um, it's not a pattern that I'm gonna start anytime soon, so I'm not in a super hurry. Um, but it is a really pretty fabric. I will certainly find a use for it, even if I don't use it for the unicorn tapestry. So, but that was long awaited because Unicorn Tapestry debuted at Nashville. And I think Misty just um, got that color down in like April, um, towards the end of April. So um, Nashville was at the beginning of March. So that was the end of April when she got that color developed. So anyway. Um, now I have a bunch of random things that I purchased from one of Misty's sales. Um, and it's going to look fairly uniform because I got in towards the end and I just bought some things that I thought would be good to have on hand. Um, so this is totally random stuff. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. And it's like, I don't even remember why I bought some of this stuff. So this is a piece of 32 count linen. I bought a lot of linen. Um, and this is just a red color coming off much more orange on camera but it's got some nice modeling to it I'm not sure um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna use it for it's a kind of a rusty sort of color so we'll see we will see this is one of those where I'm like I got it and I'm like I remember that I bought red fabric but why did I buy red fabric I had a thought when I me pleased it but I don't remember what that thought was do you ever do that <laughs> um, this is also a piece of linen this is a 32 count opal and once again these are all mystic hand dyed um, fabrics now this is really nice it's not coming off as orange as the other one but still a little bit more orange than it is in real life this will probably be a really nice like Christmas fabric with the sparkles um, and some kind of nice floss, some silks or something. That'll make some really nice Christmas ornaments or something like that, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. These next two pieces are actually hardanger cloth, which I have one other piece of hardanger cloth um, and I haven't used any of it yet. This is sort of a specialty fabric that you use for a particular type of stitching called hardanger, which is, pardon me, my throat's getting itchy. <clears> throat> um, so hardanger is a kind of stitching where you actually sometimes cut some of the threads of your fabric. <coughs> Apologies. You sometimes cut parts of um, the fabric, threads from the fabric, um, to create these gaps and different kinds of patterns and stuff. If I can remember, I'll try to throw a, an example picture in here for you. So you need a 22 count fabric and the, the, the count of the fabric is very important because you need to be able to count the individual threads to be able to decide which ones to snip and which ones to, to sew together and all different kinds of stuff. <coughs> so when Matt, when Misty did this particular sale, she had an, an extreme excess of Spring Breeze, which is that one fabric of the month color. So I got a couple of pieces of Hardanger and Spring Breeze. That's really pretty. Um, I have some Pearl Cotton floss and <coughs> at least one Hardanger pattern that I want to do. I purchased um, the uh, well the pattern was free from Lakeside Needlecraft um, but I purchased the pearl cotton from an Etsy seller ages ago <coughs> and just haven't gotten around to actually doing that so that was the first piece of hardanger <coughs> I wonder if this fabric softener is getting to me that might be a thing and this is the second piece of hardanger this one is a little bit 
a little bit smaller, I think. No, they're supposed to be the same size. This seems smaller to me. Might just be my perception. But yeah, so <clears throat> that's some more spring breeze for you. This took the dye a little bit better, I think. Um, so Hardanger must have a higher concentration of cotton than um, Lugana does. <clears throat> and last but not least from Misty, this is yet another piece of spring breeze. Um, and the reason I bought this, I remember the reason I bought this, is because this is a half yard of 32 count Lugana. And as much as I love stitching on Lugana, I was like a half yard of a relative of, to me, a neutral fabric is something you should always have. <laughs> because how many projects can you do on a half yard? So um, a half yard of fabric. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it. Okay. So this is half of a half yard. So that looks like a normal size piece of fabric. So that looks like your average fat quarter. <laughs> now, that's a full half yard. <laughs> Look how much fabric that is. If I do smalls, I can get like 16 projects out of this. Yeah, so that's why Jesse bought a half yard of that because um, I do like this this color isn't as bright as I might want for some stuff. And actually this piece, I don't know if you can tell, but this particular piece is actually much more interesting than, um, than my original fabric of the month piece that I showed you. This one has a lot more going on. Um, so subjectively, this is a better piece, um, only because I like the modeling and stuff better. It's not as uniform, um, and I appreciate that. So yeah, that's that's why I got a full half yard of this color, um, is because this will be, I can use this, it's a cool enough color, it's not too purple, um, it's a little purple, a little lavender, but it's, um, it's a versatile enough color, I think, I could use this for spring projects, um, but I could also use this for winter and Christmas projects. I tend to do like blue silver, uh, and white stuff for Christmas versus doing red and green more often, excuse me, more often than not. So I could see this being really versatile for projects all year long. And it's a great big ass piece of fabric. So that's why I got the giant half yard of Spring Breeze. <laughs> so if you wondered after my maybe lackluster um, review of it the first go around, that's why I got so much of it. Um, and like I said, that actually is a, a much, uh, in my opinion, a much better piece than uh, my original fa fabric of the month. So, okay, so now we've done Kathy fabric, we've done Misty fabric, now we're going to do Brandy fabric. Um, Brandy fabrics are always super exciting. She comes up with some crazy color combinations, not crazy, she comes up with some exciting color combinations. Um, I love the stuff that she's doing with her dye and she keeps getting more and more creative and doing more and more interesting things. Um, I am now going to be getting two pieces of fabric from her for her fabric of the month because she does a standard fabric of the month which is mostly bright colors with a few neutrals here and there and she also does a neutral fabric of the month. So every single month she does two colors. Um, and what I have decided to do is I'm going to get the bright colors in Lugana and then even we or actually Jobelin. I'm getting Jobelin because I've learned that I love Jobelin more than I love Lugana. Um, so I'll be getting a piece of 32 Jobelin in the bright colors in the standard package and then I'll be getting a piece of 32 linen in the neutrals because chances are when I need a piece of random linen it's gonna I will um, use a neutral before I will use a bright color of linen. So and I can always buy bright linens whenever I feel like it. So super excited about that change. Um, when I emailed her to tell you, she's so fantastic with customer service. So I emailed her uh, earlier this week or late last week, um, and we're already past when she's invoiced. Um, so I paid for my regular one piece invoice. And then I emailed her and I let her know up front because I'm this kind of customer, like I'm not trying to put you out. That's not the kind of customer I am. I was like, I would like to make this change to my fabric of the month. I understand we're already past the invoice stage, so I'm fine for it to not, for, for the change not to take place until July, you know, cause that's how I am. I'm like, you don't need to go to any extra trouble. Brandy replied back and said, well, I usually have extra fabrics in these counts. So if I do, I'll go ahead and change it over now. And if not, we'll wait till July. Fantastic. 
fantastic. So I may be getting two pieces. I may only be getting one piece this month. We'll see. Um, I was getting 36 count linen. And as I said, Jesse has stopped automatically getting 36 count linen because yeah, until I'm stitching on it regularly, I don't need to keep automatically getting 36 count linen. So without further ado, let's talk brandy fabrics. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you. This should be <clears throat> this should be May's fabric of the month because we haven't gotten June yet. She does hers around the 15th, I think. Um, so this is called Dreamsicle. This is, as we discussed, this is a 36 count linen. Look, look, oh my gosh. Look at that. How pretty is that? And it's got, it has some interesting stuff going on. So depending on how big a piece I want to do, I could like, if I wanted to take it out of the center, I totally could. But look, I could make at least four really interesting projects with that. Look at that. Look at that. That is so gorgeous. I love it. Love it. I wouldn't normally be in love with a bright orange fabric, but because of the this fantastic patterning she's gotten. And there's such a subtle difference between like a tie-dye situation and something like this. Like this is, this is really gorgeous, but a tie-dye could be too much, especially in this color. But how beautiful is that? Super, super beautiful. So um, I have not picked a project for this. <laughs> I'm not sure what I will pick for this, but oh my gosh, every, every direction that I turn this, there is a gorgeous, gorgeous colorway. And they're all so different. I love this starburst kind of thing happening here. So yeah, I might have to do a bunch of smalls with this, um, which on 32 count would be really kind of cool to do some smalls. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the rest of this, I believe, is all Friday Night Fight Night fabrics maybe I think yeah these are numbered so these must all be <clears throat> yeah this one was not numbered so that's a fabric of the month so let's do then the neutrals first and I'm gonna do okay I don't know why it matters what order it just does so this color this is a 25 count Lugana couldn't tell you why I decided 25 count maybe I just like the color um, this is the problem with doing Friday night fight night or uh, Misty Sunday postings or Kathy Sunday postings because you just get so excited to get a me please in there that sometimes you're not really paying close attention to what you're buying um, so yeah this is a 25 count Lugana which is gonna be really really nice for something and this color is fantastic so I think, I think this color might be like a Kikimora or, um, or something like that. Some kind of woodsy something. So did I say this color is called Tree Hugger? It's really, really nice. You're getting more yellow and blue um, than I am in person. Um, there's a lot more of a spring green in person. And actually when I move it over here, it looks like brown and blue. That's really not true. <laughs> That's really not true to color. Wow, so this is, yeah, the camera's not picking this up at all. Um, let's see if I can get it on this side, but probably not. No, it's, we're not getting, no. <laughs> You'll have to trust me, this one is much more green. <laughs> it's green with some little, with some, uh, some hints of blue to give it like a darker green cast has a little bit of brown. It is not brown with blue um, like it looks on camera. So um, really nice piece of fabric. It's gonna be, oh, that's a little bit better. You can kind of see that better. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> but yeah, this is gonna be fantastic for some kind of woodsy, naturey something. Um, oh, if I could find like a Celtic green man kind of pattern that I like, that would be fantastic on this. Um, but yeah, I bought it not having a particular project in mind. So now I'm looking for a project that goes on it. <laughs> Let's see. I have a couple of a couple of pieces, different kinds of pieces in this colorway. So this colorway is called Toast. Um, this particular piece is a 36 count linen. Me and the 36 count. Um, but oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look. I mean, is Toast not the perfect name for this color? That is, that is 
nothing but toast. It's so gorgeous. So gorgeous. I might use this for um, the Animal Stacks patterns, maybe. Um, it's coming off a little bit more orange on camera. Um, it's a little bit more brown yellow in person. Um, so it's less rusty and more parchment-y in person. Um, but it's really, really nice. Love it. Love, 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 love. So um, I think that would work really well for some of those like Plum Street more primitive um, looking samplers or um, stitches. This is a piece, uh, another piece of 25 count Lugana, but this is also in toast. This is gorgeous. And this is a nice big piece too. This is 18, 27. So look at that. Very nice. And this one too, again, you know, depending on how I decide, what size of stuff I decide to work on and the placement and stuff, there's a lot of different options. So I could get a really nice kind of parchment situation here if I have some small stitches for this section and this section and even this third one here because they have, they have those darker tones right on the outside edges. So that would be a nice good parchment kind of situation. And then I've got more modeling in other areas. Um, the whole, if I wanted to do a big piece, the whole thing could look very parchment-y. I'm trying to knock off my color and cottons. Don't do that. <coughs> oh, yeah. I will say for anyone who is sensitive to scents, um, to fabric softeners and things like that, um, all three of these dyers um, use scented fabric softener. Um, some of it is, is less... Um, fragrant than others but if you're sensitive just be aware um, you may be able to contact any of them um, directly and ask about that in case you have any issues um, I, I'm a little sensitive to smells especially perfume and stuff like that I usually don't have issues with these today for some reason I'm having a little bit of a congestion but it may not be the fabric it might just be me I just put that out there in case that's an issue but toast toast is gorgeous love this colorway fantastic one this one is really really nice so this is a 32 count jobelin and I'm very excited that I got jobelin um, and again I'm not sure what I'm gonna use this for but I really really like it I just like this color and this is another very aptly named she's really good at naming her colors look 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 look, <gasps> look. Oh, beautiful 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 Oh, this is 18 by 34, and I wonder it's so big. Look. Look, look, look. Oh. I'm getting some, like, icy ocean waves out of this one. It's got a little bit of yellow to it, um, so it's warmer than you would normally think of. Uh, the color is called blueberry. Um, it really does kind of look like she smashed blueberries into the fabric, doesn't it? I mean, it's really nice. Um, really, really gorgeous. This is a nice long piece. Ooh, I just had a thought. So one of the patterns I've been wanting to do since I got back into stitching and started watching floss tube is a pattern by Long Dog Samplers called Froth and Bubble. Um, I first heard about it from Rolodex Stitches on floss tube. Um, it was a pattern that she was working on when I first started watching her when she first started posting. And um, that's a long piece. I don't know how wide it is. I'd have to look at the stitch count, but it's a nice long, it's a, it's a long stitch. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if this might work for that, because this is a nice long piece, but it's not too wide. That might actually be, that might be the perfect piece. Um, that one's got some color in it. It's not just straight up um, solid black, like some of the the Quaker, more Quaker style samplers that um, Long Dog does, but it doesn't have too much color in it. Um, I'm gonna have to look at that. This might be, this might be froth and bubble, y'all. We'll have to see. It's not one I'll start anytime soon, but um, I want to, I definitely would like to use that entire piece on one project. I think that would be great. So, and with that, we're done. An hour and 14 minutes, people. <laughs> I never would have thought I had that much haul. And if I tried to talk about knitting, oh my gosh, we'd be here for at least another 30 or 40 minutes. So 
Um, like I said, um, I will try. I'll, in the future, I'm going to try to keep putting Hall in my regular floss tubes. I'm not going to keep trying to do this as a separate video. Um, it's just that this time I knew I had so much that if I kept putting it off, it was just never going to happen. And I know a lot of people like to see what you're getting, the new stuff that you have and that kind of stuff. So I wanted to make sure you had a chance to see that. Um, in the future, I'll try to keep putting it in my regular floss tube, but um, the knitting will go in its own video um, because my floss tubes tend to be long anyway. So I'm just going to separate that out for you. Um, that way if you only like the knitting you can watch the knitting and you don't have to watch the rest of it If you don't like the knitting you don't have to watch it. So um, hopefully that'll work out Hopefully you'll see all the things that you want to see um, And I hope you're doing really really well I hope that you're having a great day and I hope that you are staying safe and staying well and uh, You know if you have any questions if you have any comments feel free, you know Leave some notes here in the comments send me an email if you have a specific question um, Otherwise, I will see you next time have a good one.